Some of you decided to throw balls. Some of you decided to just talk, whatever. Um, and, you know, that's cool. That's cool. Um, and so if as a youth group and as a youth group leader, who would, that would be Reg, and as a youth group volunteer, if we came here on Wednesday night and we said, hey, do whatever you want, go crazy. How many of you would continue to come to youth group? For what purpose? For what purpose? Huh? For, for what, what purpose would you come to youth group to be able to tear a building up or throw little balls at one another? What, what purpose is that for? Is that for social interaction? Exercise, okay, all right, and <clears throat> so, and we'll we'll get we'll get back to, um, you know, God and how He's just. Um, so just for a little tidbit out there that you know, choices do have consequences. So we'll, we'll get back to that one though. So everybody, go ahead. And, you know, you can sit wherever you want. If you want to sit back on the couches, you know, just have set in this room. Doesn't matter where. No, don't, don't move the couches. You guys just set the couches there. That's no problem. No problem. Just set the couches there. No problem. Just set back there. Yep. Okay. So you guys have 20 seconds. 20 seconds to find wherever you're going to set. And then after 20 seconds, you're just sitting there. And, and then we're going to have to have some, probably some rules. I mean, obviously, no Mikey, no talking. Okay, that probably needs to be one. So unless you have the microphone in your hand, I would ask that you just be respectful and would be quiet. So you've got, over there on the couch, you've got like five seconds to get it out. Okay, five seconds. Okay, all right, and you two, there you go. Because if not, I'll come sit in between you and do my lesson. Perfect, all right. So with that, who would like to come up and open us in prayer. Jen. Okay, come on up. No Mikey, no talkie. Okay, dear Holy Father, I thank you for this night. I thank you for this group of individuals who's taken time out of their night to come and learn more about you, Lord. I pray that you will just give us an open heart, an open mind, Lord. I pray for Rich. I pray that you will just give him words to speak. You will give him wisdom. I pray that you would just be present here tonight. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Hold, hold on a second, Jen, because you volunteered. I got something for you here. Tell them what that is. It's a twenty dollar bill. I think it's out of my purse. <laughs> okay. Thanks. So what what would what would the what would the purpose of that be? Why would why would somebody just give twenty bucks up? What? To prove they're good at stealing. She didn't steal it. I didn't take it out of her purse. Huh? I didn't take I didn't take it out of her purse. So no, but the question is is I asked somebody to volunteer to do something. Go ahead, Miranda. Okay, well, that would be one way. Um, if we look at it from maybe the Christ perspective, Christ is looking at Kylie and saying, Kylie, I, I need you to step out and do this. I need you to get out of that comfort zone, come all the way over to here, because I've got a blessing for you. But I can't give you this blessing here. You've got to move. You've got to go. 
you've got to do here before you get that blessing. Right? And so that's, that's like what we're talking about tonight with the story is that God told the Israelites what? I'm going to get you out of Egypt. So he takes them out of Egypt. They go to the Red Sea. He parts the Red Sea, dries the land. They walk across. Now they're out here in the desert. They're free. For 430 years, what happened? And if you're in my small group, if you're in my small group, so for 430 years, what were they? Slaves. Yes. All right. And so as a slave, how many choices do you have? None, right? Kind of like being a high schooler. No choices, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, okay. And so, so for 430 years, the Israelites knew one thing and one thing only. They knew how to take orders. They knew how to have somebody standing over them, telling them what to do, day in, day out, day after day, night after night. All right. Now they want out of that. God says, okay. Sends Moses, they're out of it. Now what happens? If, if you don't have slavery, or for you guys, if you didn't have to go to school, we'll say, you know, not that you go eight hours a day, because I don't think you do. But if we did, if you guys had 40 hours a week to do whatever you wanted, Wouldn't that be cool? Huh? You get bored? Yeah? Yeah? How many of us How many of us would be like the Israelites and say, okay, you know, I want out, I want, I want, I want. So let's, God gives it to them. Now they've got all this free time. The only thing God's asking is, you know, worship me. Well, I've got all this free time now. I've got lots of choices. I can go to the movies. I don't, I don't need to come to youth group. You know, I can, I can go to a party. I can go have a baby. I can go do whatever, you know? Huh? Right? Did you like that, Miranda? <laughs> so, all right. And so you've got all this free time and Moses goes up on the mountain and is talking to God. Moses is up there for six weeks. Now remember in the last six months, nine months or so, all the Israelites have seen what, what happened? What did they see that got them out of Egypt? Again, again, small group. Anybody else? What, What'd they see? Okay, all right, small group. What, what? Plagues, right? They saw miracle after miracle after miracle after miracle that God performed with the biggest and baddest of going through the entire nation. That would be like going through the entire United States and if you didn't do what God asked you to do on the last one, which was paint lamb's blood over your door, if you didn't do that, then if you all have older siblings, or if you are the oldest sibling, you're dead. Yeah, Audrey, huh? You better hope mom and dad's listening to Jesus, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. But, so... Th so the Israelites have seen this. Hey. Yeah, okay. All right. Miranda, tell the baby no Mikey, no talkie, all right? Okay. But so you've got so you've got this here, and this is where they're at. And this starts the reading of chapter five of the story. They've just gotten out of slavery. They've just got all this free time on their hands. You know, life is good. It's a party. 
All right. Now, God being a good God, God being a just God, God who has made them his people, God who has performed all these miracles for them, God who has done everything up to that point for them with the intent to get them out of the slavery and take them to the promised land. And God says, okay, just like tonight, you had the five minutes. And I know, you know, most of you guys were reserved. There was a couple that decided they wanted to throw some balls and stuff. But really, honestly, if all the adults left the room and you knew there were no consequences, how many of you would have been throwing balls? Huh? Honestly, yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. You, you would have, right? You would have. And so at, at this point, at this point, hey, hey, focus back, focus back. Everybody listen to the crying baby. Okay, all right, all right. Now, now focus back. Okay, so at this point, and Aaron, does anybody know his response? Huh? Zoe. Yeah, he put all the gold in the fire and out came this calf. That would be like me going to, or you, one of you guys going to your teacher. Your teacher knows where you, leo, you live. Your teacher knows you don't have a dog and going up to your teacher and saying, my dog ain't my homework. Really? I mean, really? That's, that's the best you could come up with. Okay. And so Moses gets angry and Moses has a right to be angry. Because again, what has God already done up to this point just in the last nine months? He, he has done everything for them, right? And so with free time and with us being who we are, and you can go back 2,000 years or you can go to today, we are sinful people. I have a sinful nature. You have a sinful nature. And we will sin. And so God says, you know what? Maybe we need to establish some things here. Maybe we need to establish like some rules, some guidelines, something that, you know, if you guys will try and follow these, will make your life better. Not easier, but better. Because, I mean, about everybody in this room is starting to drive now, right? If you could choose whether you drove on the left side of the road or the right side of the road, and everybody else could choose that, I wouldn't be driving, I can tell you that. Right? I mean, you have to have some rules, don't you? Yeah? Yeah, well, Lucas, you're supposed to just give your keys to your dad and, and just walk. So, so, but, but there has to be, there has to be some type of a, a system, doesn't there? Right? And so, so that's, that's where we're at. And that's where we are um, in the story. And so you think about that, that the cool thing about it is, is that <clears throat> the Israelites are free now. And with that freedom comes responsibility. As a parent, I'm responsible for my children. As you guys, as drivers, you're responsible for not only your vehicle, but the people inside your vehicle. And then obviously, for the other people on the road, you should be responsible enough not to hit them. Accident on purpose doesn't matter. You should be responsible enough not to hit them. Okay. <clears throat> and so we have, we have the Israelites that had no hope because they were in slavery. Get out of slavery. Come in and uh, <clears throat> basically the Egyptians' armies killed. They're sent out into the desert. God provides 
food for them. God provides, you know, everything for all of them. And then God says, you know, okay, we need to, we need to have some things going on here. And so God, who has already proved his love for them, gives them these, these guidelines. And, and I think, I think one of the things that's, and again, I mean, you know, I guess it doesn't matter. Small group can answer too, is that <clears throat> they were experiencing freedom. The Israelites were experiencing freedom, but were they living freely? Were they living in freedom? And is there a difference between being set free and then living free? Do you guys think there is a difference between being set free and living free? Yes. Okay. And what would that difference be, Lucas? Okay, you have some choices then, right? Okay, yeah, yeah. And then also because of God's relationship with the Israelites and God's love for the Israelites, God's bringing order to the Israelites because the Israelites didn't have order up to that point. The Israelites had the Egyptians. The Israelites themselves didn't have any order. They had the Egyptians telling them what to do. And so if we all graduate high school, and we all go to college. Or we just get out of the house and go work. Whatever. At that point, you guys are like the Israelites. No more mom and dad's rules. Mom's not calling to say, hey, did you get your college algebra done for your college class? The college algebra teacher you turn it in, you turn it in. If you don't, you don't. But choices have consequences. And we'll, we'll come back to that one later too. <clears throat> um, and so God basically treasures the Israelites. And he says that you will rule over the world. You will rule over everything in the world. Okay? And that <clears throat> it was God's relationship with the Israelites that he'd come up with the commandments. All right? And so, um, one of the things I, I do want to talk to you about with the commandments, um, and this is participatory. That's a big word for me. I had to practice that one. So, I would hope all of you will participate. Okay? Yes. All right. So, right now, on a scale of 1 to 10, with what you know about God's commandments, would you say God is a cosmic killjoy or all you need is love? So one to 10 being one, he's a killjoy. 10 being all you need is love. AJ's back there. All you need is love. He's got his arms open, everything. So, so what do you guys think? This is the participatory time. What do you guys think? Cosmic killjoy? Yeah? Okay. All right. And so, I guess maybe we should back up a minute now that we've got tens out there. Let's see. Let's see. I don't know. Reg, have you counted the people yet tonight? All right, let's see. In a group of 40 people, including adults, so 32 students. Boom. Let's see, in 32 students, can you guys name off the Ten Commandments? And keep track.
Okay. All right. I'm not sure if we got all 10 or not, but since we do have a Bible open over here, I bet we can get all 10. So go ahead and start with the first one and read, would you please? Absolutely, yes. Okay. All right. So Moses is coming down the mountain with 10 commandments, or if you were in church, there were 15, <clears throat> but he makes it down the mountain with 10 out of those 10. Now remember, this is a people that within a year's time have seen awesome, miraculous things in a year's time, have seen all this and have missed Moses for six weeks. Now Moses is walking down with the laws from God. And as they were read, how many, how many of those commandments do you think were broke before Moses got down the mountain? All of them? Yeah. Yeah. More than likely, yes, probably so. Probably so. So, you know, <clears throat> the Ten Commandments, and, and again, if, if you guys are in church and we're listening to Rick, I'm going to do a little quiz. So what are the first four about? Dan, since you raised your hand. Reverence for God. Break that down into layman's term. What does the word reverence mean? Honoring God? Okay. What else? What else would other than honoring or reverence for God? Kara. Okay. Relationship with God. Yes. Okay. And so then if one through four is our relationship with Christ, then what would be five through Ten. Skyler. Like other people. Very good. Yes. Yes. Very good. All right. And so, so what we, what what can we do to embrace and follow the commands more fully? What do you, what do you think we could do? One would be we could know them. That would be one. Right. So, if, if we know them, and I'm, I'm guilty of breaking them too, I'm not, it's not condemnation. If we know them, and we come on fifth quarter game nights, or fifth quarter, and, <clears throat> you know, at home, I'm pretty sure that probably if you dropped your plate of food on the floor, Mom or dad would tell you, what? Pick it up. Yep. That's true. Very true. Yep. Happens in my house. Happened when I was small. Right? And because this couch was moved, I can look back where that couch was, and it looks to me like there was a plate that maybe somebody had on fifth quarter night and decided, oh, you know, I'll just shove it behind the couch. Nobody will ever know. Right? Huh? So, so, obvious answer to the question of would that person be getting closer to Christ or further from Christ? Further. Okay. But how, how can we, how can we do or how can we embrace and follow the commandments more fully. How does that look in your life from 815 
to 3.30. And it wants some practical, practical ways. How does, how does that, how does that work? How does that work practically in your life? To embrace and follow the commandments at high school. But how, how do you, how do you, how do you follow them? Some practical ways. Huh? Well, I don't know. I mean, you know, what if, what if they're, you know, what if they're going to FCA in the morning? But, you know. But is it, Lucas, with that, though, is it is it about following? Is it is it about leading? Is it about leading or following, or is it is it more more personal? Remember, like when Moses when Moses talked to God in the in chapter five. What happened to Moses? Anybody else besides Kara? Or Miranda. Parker, did you have your hand raised or is that is that half raised? Okay, all right, all right, all right. I'm just I didn't know. I didn't know, so I wanted to give you that opportunity, bud. Hey. So, okay. And so so when when Moses was talking with God, his face became radiant. Ah, sorry. So, Kara, explain that word. So, like, he had, like, a boom box and bright, bright, sunshiny day was playing, or? Okay, all right. Okay. And so, people knew, people recognized, because Moses had been with God. People recognized that and could see that. So, okay, practically, none of us are going to go up a mountain and talk to God. More than likely. I'm not going to say definitely, but more than likely. In Kansas, more than likely, none of us are going to go up a mountain and talk to God. So, but, Norman what? Norman what? In Kansas? You need some sleep, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So, so, but, but people can see if you have a relationship with Christ, people can see that. Yeah. I mean, if you have a relationship with Christ, you know, and you have a boyfriend or girlfriend, probably necking in the parking lot. And I said necking in the parking lot or in the hallways. Huh? What does necking mean? Do you want uh, like a, like a, Full-fledged demonstration, Jen, come here. No, okay. All right. Necking is kissing, okay? Because I wanted somebody to ask that question. Because back in my day, it wasn't called kissing; it was called necking. All right, Jen. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Focus again. Focus again. Focus again. So, you know, everybody, you know, we're all here. Probably all of our friends that aren't here know where you go to youth group. If you go to school tomorrow, you go to FCA, you come out of FCA, and the first thing you do is find your buddies or your girlfriends and you say an off-color joke, or you say GD, or OMG, or whatever, how effective, or how radiant is your face beaming with God? Hmm? That's right. What, what are people going to say? 
Uh huh. They're, yeah. Yep. They're gonna they're gonna start saying the H word. And that's not hippopotamus. So we're gonna, we're gonna kind of move forward a little bit because we're getting, eh, we we got a little time. But so when the Is Israelites insisted Aaron build that calf, it was an example of the people trying to invent their own religion, right? So how do how do people how do people still do that today? Like what? Or, since you're childless, maybe we'll go a step back. Be like boyfriends, right? Yeah? What else? Your phone, yes. Money, yes. How many, of, how many of you, and I, I probably should have done this, how many of you, after I gave Jen that $20 bill, if I just said, who else wants to pray, how many of you would have come up front? Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But she didn't. She, she wasn't as quick a volunteer as Jen. So. So, all right. In what area of your life do you guys focus on the limitations of God? And and let's see. Yeah, when you focus more on, on the limitations of God's ability to work through you. Because God, you know, God can do anything. And obviously, through this part up till now, he's done everything. Right? He's filled the... You know, like this room, he'd have filled it full of frogs, locusts, all that, turn the water to blood. So, so how many of us focus on, on God's limitations, more on our limitations than, than God's ability to work through us? You know, like Moses, for example, at the burning bush, which is a miracle in itself. So, no, I, I can't do this, you know. Right? So we say, you know, I'm, I don't know the Bible well enough. I don't know how to talk to people. I don't like a microphone. Reg gets paid for it. <sighs> oh, yeah. I like that one. Yeah. Reg gets paid for it. Right? I'm just a volunteer. What difference does it make? Hmm? I'm just in high school. Right? We've all got limitations, but the limitations is what we put on ourselves. And one of the interesting things that I think Rick talked about it, and I don't think he talked about it this time, I think it was a couple weeks ago, is that God will use our weaknesses to glorify him for two reasons. One being that obviously if he's using my weaknesses, I know that I didn't do it. But maybe more importantly, other people around me know I didn't do it. Right? And so, so God will use your limitations, just like God used Moses. So don't focus on, or don't tell God I can't. Don't tell God I won't. Because remember, like we talked about, if we're here and God wants us over here, We've got blessings over here from God, but if we don't go, there they go. Right? So, what are some ways that Christians should stand out? Do what's right when when others know, 
Oh, others don't. Okay. So what's that look like, Lucas? Oh, bullying. Yeah. Okay. That's what I thought too. I'm like bullying. Why would you stand up for somebody that's bullying? Yeah, I got, I got it, I got it. But just you know, probably need to clean the wax. I don't know. Sorry. Yeah. So, so that would be one. Kara. Right. Yeah. But but they talked about being holy. And we talked about that being set apart, right? Yeah. To be set apart. To be different. And it's okay to be different. It's okay to have a higher standard. <coughs> it's okay not to neck in the hall because the other kids do it. Yeah. Just, it's okay not to do that. Right? Okay. All right. So then let's take this to, and I guess maybe from the lower story to the lower, lower story, if that makes sense, to where it hits you guys personal. No, don't cry. But I want you to take like 45 seconds, and I want you to think. Is there an aspect, a part of my life that God's telling me to step out in? Or is there a person that God's telling me to go talk to them? Maybe it's somebody in this room. Maybe it's somebody at high school. Maybe it isn't. So like for the next, we'll say minute, or maybe maybe to the next baby sound. To to really search through and see if there's somebody that God is revealing to you. Some person or an aspect of your own life that God's revealing to you. All right? And then the challenge would be, obviously, to go do what you feel God's telling you to go do. Okay? So, <clears throat> kind of what I want to hope you guys get out of tonight is that, one, God loves you. Two, that God wants a better life for you. Doesn't necessarily mean... It's going to be easier, but it can be better based on choices. Would you agree with that? Disagree with that? Okay. Three, that Exodus 
So it goes Genesis, Exodus. Yeah, you can call it that. Just Exodus. So second book of the Bible, you know, kind of up towards the front then. Exodus 20. That's where you can find the commandments. So if you don't know them, that's where you can find them. It's kind of hard kind of hard to know if you're living them if you don't know them. Would you agree? Okay. So, one is that God loves us, desires a relationship with us, and based on that love and desire, that's where the commandments came from. So Exodus 20 is the commandments. So if you forget them, or just want to refresh your mind, go ahead for it. Um, those are the basic two things. And then honestly, is that, you know, Christ loves you. So we've got a few minutes before, remember that thing I talked about way back when? Yeah, yeah, before that comes right back up to the front. So um, does anybody have any questions? Anybody have any comments pertaining to tonight? Anybody have any prayer requests? We're all good. We're all holy people. That is awesome. Reg, you're doing an awesome job then. Okay, so uh, it's about five minutes before nine. And so I'm going to close this in prayer. And then way in the back, those consequences that were back there, we're going to come right back up here and put them in the light. Okay, so. Who would like to close us in prayer? Sweet, I'll do it and keep the 20 bucks myself then. All right, awesome. So, no, I'll go ahead and close the prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you um, for loving us first. Uh, we thank you for um, caring enough um, about us to, to want to um, improve our lives. And God, um, I just pray that um, as the students go to school tomorrow, um, God, I pray that um, if you spoke to them and there is something that you're asking them to do, I pray, God, that uh, they would step out in boldness. They would step out in faith. They would step out um, because you've asked them to and make a difference. Um, go talk to that person. Um, and I pray, God, that if if anybody does have any prayer requests, if anybody does have any questions, um, that they'd feel comfortable enough to come and speak to one of the adults. I want to give glory and honor to you for everything you've given to me. I ask all this in your precious name. Amen. Okay. All right. Before we start moving around, <clears throat> that, that big, long word, consequences, is coming right back up here. So, in the first five minutes when you guys could do whatever you wanted to do. So there were a couple that decided they wanted to go ahead and pick the balls up and throw them around. So like I said, choices have consequences and I'm glad, really glad that it was like both genders because that means our bathrooms will get clean tonight. So, um, and is there anybody who would like to vacuum?